If you don't have self-confidence, here's what you have. You have a really bad reputation with yourself. You have built a habit of not keeping the promises you make to yourself. We've all heard this before. You need to believe and know that your one decision, one relationship, one meeting, one book, one thought, one something away from a completely different life. Here's how I built what I would call almost superhuman confidence in spite of my insecurity. Think about that. Superhuman confidence in spite of my insecurity. It's an effort play. If you don't have self-confidence, you've never kept the promises you make to yourself. Check that box. If you have self-confidence, you've started to keep the promises you make to yourself. If you want to have superhuman self-confidence, you keep the promises you make to yourself and one more. So if I'm going to get up and I'm going to work out, I'm going to do 10 reps in the gym, I do one more. Wow. If I'm going to do 45 minutes on the treadmill, I do one more. If I want to make 10 contacts in a day, I do that and one more. If I'm going to tell my daughter I love her every day, I'm going to do that and one more. Because in life, we don't get our goals, we get our standards long term. And so if your standard is one more, starts what starts to happen is you go, I'm willing to do things other people aren't willing to do. And I combine that, that I have great faith, great associations, and I intend to help people. This is a formula to build wonderful self-confidence and never lack humility when you have it. Never link your confidence to your ability. It's predicated on your abilities or your achievements. You're always going to be chasing it. But if you link your confidence to your intentions, mm. man, you have beautiful intentions. And that is something I knew about me. I know I have a good heart. And all of us, we run around carrying these bags of, I'm not qualified because I made this mistake. I had this bankruptcy. This relationship didn't work. I did this thing you don't know about. I'm so ashamed of. And that's why you're qualified. That's the thing that qualifies you. Yeah. The humanness in you. You are the only human being with your combination of gifts that you were given, whatever they are, and your experience. Mm -hmm. And real human beings help real human beings by being vulnerable and yeah. transparent, saying, I know where you are. I've messed up worse. I've made greater mistakes. I felt more. I know that depression. I know that anxiety. I know that shame. I know what that feels like. You're one away, one relationship, one meaning, one person, one thought away from changing your life. So how do we let go of the past? Well, we have to create a compelling future. In other words, you're not going to let go of one thing until you've grabbed onto the right. next. You have to create a new future. You have to create a future in it. And by the way, it's okay that you don't believe all of it initially, as long as it becomes repetitive and we begin to take steps towards it, right? So it's, it's it, for me, I still have stuff from my past. There's still a little part of me that doesn't want to be broke. There's yeah, still yeah. a little bit of fear. It's only, I've said, but you're you, not broke. Yeah, but, but you've interviewed some of the most <laughs> successful actors and entertainers, so have I. And you get them privately, and sometimes yeah. on your show they go, you afraid it's going to go away? They go, yeah, I am. That's why I work so hard. So there's an element of that that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's creating this vision for your life that's compelling. Can you survive the temporary? And if you can survive the temporary, it says on the other side of temporary pain, you get introduced to your other self. And that other self produces that other life. Uh -huh. And so here's what happens for most of us. We think everything's permanent. And because we think it's permanent, we make permanent decisions based on temporary conditions. Even our bodies, other than our souls, are temporary. But if your body isn't permanent, your problem isn't, your pain isn't, you need to create a different relationship with pain in your life. For most people, their relationship with the pain and the inconvenience is to avoid it. Avoid as so much if you could be, Yeah, but if you could say to yourself, on the other side of this is this other self. The hardest working you've ever been, the most crazy focus you've ever been, was the happiest you've ever been in your life. And the truth of the matter is that most of you don't understand the effort, the time, the focus, the obsessiveness that's required to do something great with your life. But you have to get great and you have to be intentional. You have to be obsessive. Yeah. I know what you put into this. I know what the time is. I know what the relentless pace is. I know what the focus is and how much you think about it. I know this has to be something that's just infectious. And when people get around you, it emanates and there's an energy and there's like, this person's just going to will this to happen. Right. I think just most people dramatically underestimate the amount of obsessive, crazy, relentless focus it takes to be great at something. Yes. And then they go, well, I don't want to be that out of balance or control. Then you don't want to be great. My default personality is uh, insecure. Even today? Even today. Come on. Very much. Really? Very much. 
How is that the fault? You wake up and you say, uh, I'm a nobody or what? What's the, um, what's the I story? lack this. I'm fooling everybody. Really? If they, if they really knew, you know, I've always tried to disqualify myself. I was bullied as a kid. My dad was an alcoholic. I wasn't a real big guy. Um, I disqualify myself because, you know, the truth is that maybe for a while, everything that I got that was loved when I was a child only came when I achieved something. I wasn't good in school. The only thing I was good at was sports. So my default is tons of insecurity. I love to beat myself up with mistakes I've made. I did this, I did that. I should have done this. I didn't do that. And I've always thought these mistakes, these weaknesses of mine, disqualify me from being happy or helping people. The confidence part is the thing I'm always going to have to work on. Even today, even with all the success and the, you know, the massive show and the big businesses and all the homes and everything that people see. Yeah. What yeah. else do you need, though, to feel more confident? I don't need other things. It's an internal game. The, the stuff is really fleeting and temporary. So I, it's not stuff. What needs to happen for me is that I'm most confident when I'm living in my intention, which is to serve. Like, that's a beautiful expression of a man. A real man is capable of real love. Yeah. That's a sign of real strength. And what we do is we gravitate towards the familiar emotions in our life, even if they're not ones that serve us. And I don't think there's negative or positive emotions. I say this in the book. There just are. Yes. Fear isn't negative. It Fear in abundance is negative. Some frustration, some anger is appropriate. It's to the dosage level. And we get these four or five of them. For me, some chaos is okay. It's fun. It's exciting. It's exhilarating, right? But getting it every day, every week, every month, all the time, mm -hmm. chaos is my gateway emotion to the ones I don't want. Chaos gives me stress. Chaos gives me anger. Chaos gives me frustration. Chaos gives me fear. I used to think, well, that's a superpower, though, because I've created all these external... Look what I made. Look, look what, what I did. did. Yeah. And I'm doing it because of that. The truth is I did it in spite of it. You did. And there's a lot of things in our lives that we have linked to our formula, our recipe of success that we hold on to that you've done in spite of those things, not because of those things. But my dad knew I was a dreamer and my dad would always say, you know, I was one decision away from changing my life the whole time, one choice. And he'd say, Eddie, you're not as far away from these dreams as you think you are. And I'd say, really dad? And he'd go, no, you're actually a lot closer than you think. But because you think it's so far away, you behave in accordance with that belief system and it always keeps it that far away from you. If the things most important to you are your worries, fears, anxieties, problems, bills, you will continue to have people, places, and things revealed to you that confirm it. My definition of greatness is that you create a life that matches your vision for your life. And that's greatness, no matter what that looks like for you.